So let's take a look at another doubt that I was sent. So we've got a problem here, uh, which is regarding trigonometry. And also, we will have to apply some rules, uh, namely the sine rule and the cosine rule. So I've put here the section of your formula booklet in which you can find the equations that are going to be useful for us in this question. Also, we'll be using the calculator here. Okay, so let's take a look at the problem. The following diagram shows the quadrilateral ABCD. So A, B, C, D. We can see here that this is split into two different triangles. None of them is a right triangle. And we've got some information. AD is 6. AB is 15. ABC is 44 degrees. And ACD, ACB is 85. And we've got this angle here, um, DAC, which we have labeled to be theta, uh, at which we don't know the value yet. So letter A, find AC, to find this length. Analyzing what we have here, all the information that we have around us, we know some information about this triangle. Uh, we would have to choose some triangle to look for some properties that we can use to find this length. So if we took at this, take a look at this um, larger triangle here, um, we know two angles, one of, which, uh, one, one of which is opposite to the side that we're trying to find, um, but we know two angles and one side. So if you remember, remember clearly, the sign rule is applicable when we know at least two sides and one angle or two angles and one side and we can uh, of course um, two, we, we need um, two of the same side for example if I know this side and the angle opposite to it and this angle I will be able to calculate what is the side which is opposite to it because basically what the sign rule tells us is that there, there is a relation between the angles and their opposite sides. And that ratio is constant. So we can get the ratio of the sine of 83 over 15. And that should be something constant. So, since this is constant, I may use this angle as well and it should be proportional its sign should be proportional to the opposite side I'll call this X now with this information we can find our X if we rearrange that equation make an X our subject we will get 15 multiplied by sine of 44 divided by sine of 83. So, now let's go for our calculator and let's make sure that it's properly configured for us to use our um, trigonometric functions in degrees. So, we have to press shift setup then we can already see that it's in radians which would not work. So, we'll have to change to degrees and now we would be able, we should be able to do it. So 15 times sin of 44 divided by sin of 83. And we have 10.49A1 and so forth. Now, usually we we should give this value, oh, and we forgot the unit, centimeters. Usually we should give this value in something around three significant figures. So 10.5 centimeters would be the appropriate answer. And that's letter A. Now for letter B, we're asked to find the area of triangle ABC, which is this one that we have just worked with. 
Now, if we take a look at the equation for the area of the triangle, we would need two sides and the angle between them. So, if we know now x, which is this side AC, we have just found to be 10.5, and if we take this another angle, which is 15, we would need to use the angle which is between them. Now, we also know a relation, it's not written here, but we should know a relation between the, um, in, the, the inside angles of a triangle. Their sum should be 180. So to find the angle which is missing here, I could even give it a name, but it's, it's something so easy that it's not worth it. Take a look. I should just get 180, subtract 80, 83, and subtract 44. So this angle which is missing here is 53 degrees. Hence, if you want to calculate the area, you will basically do half times. We're going to use those two sides. So 15, it's in centimeters, multiplied by 10.5. It's also in centimeters, multiplied by the sin of our angle, which is 53 degrees. Since those two measurements are in centimeters, our final area will be in centimeters squared. So let's put those values in our calculator. So 15 multiplied by 10.5 multiplied by sin of 53 and we still have to divide this by 2. So again up to three significant figures our value will be 62.9 squared centimeters. Let's go for letter C. We're given some more piece of information. This time we're told that the area of the, the other triangle that we have here, ACD, is half the area of our original triangle. And now we're asked to find what are the possible values of theta. Now, you might inquire, possible values? Will there be more than one? Well, the fact is, first of all, when you... I may explain this in two ways. One of them is, there will be two triangles in which you may get half of that area. So you may have one triangle in which this angle is acute and you may have another one in which it's obtuse. And mathematically, those will appear because you will be calculating your angle um, using the inverse of the sine. And when you use the inverse of the sine function with angles between 0 and 180, you will get two possible values you will have values which are um, at the same distance from, the nine, from 90 degrees. So for instance, if you find one result to be 80 degrees, the other one will be 100. If you find one to be 70, the other one would have to be 110, just because they are equidistant to 90 degrees. 90 degrees is what's going to give us sine equals 1. An angle larger than that will give us a, less, uh, a slightly less va a lower value for a sine, which is slightly less than 1. A slightly lower value for the angle will also give us a slightly lower. This is the top of our function, of our sine function. Well, so, if we know that the area of that second triangle, I'll call this A2, is half of the area of the original er uh, triangle that we have found, which was 62.9, what would be the formula for this area that we're talking about now? So we can use a various, uh, the very same equation for the area, but now we're going to use 
AD as one of our sides because we know that, it's measures, that it measures 6, and AC, which is the first length that we have found. So this should also be equal to a half times 6 times 10.5 times the sine of theta. Now what we have to do here is rearrange that equation in order to get first the sine and then after we can extract our inverse function and get the, the actual angle. So here we can get rid of some things before we even move them around. So we should have that sine of theta is 62.9 divided by 6 times 10.5. Therefore, theta should be the arc sine or the inverse sine of that 62.9 over 6 times 10.5. It's important to notice that those values here, they will always have to be between um, negative 1 and 1. Why? Because sine always produces a value which is between 1 and negative 1. So if you try to put any value which is larger than 1 or less than negative 1 here, it will produce an error. Now it's the time for us to go to our calculator and to use our functions to get the, va the values that we need, our angle. So inverse sine. I'll open brackets 62.9 divide by, I'll open brackets again, 6 times 10.5 and then I close brackets twice. So, one possible angle would be theta equal 86.8 degrees. Now, as I told you before, this is one possible angle you have another possibility. The other one is what if this angle was actually 90 degrees um, was obtuse. So what if it was larger than 90 degrees, not lower, not less than 90 degrees? The calculator will give you only one result. So you will have to look for the other value. So if we take 90 and subtract 86.8 you will have 3.2 so that means that this possible value is 3.2 degrees um, it's 3.2 degrees lower than 90 degrees so another possible result would be if your angle was actually 90 degrees plus 3.2 and that would be 93.2. If you want to check, you can always get your calculator and do the sign yourself. So 93.2 and sin of 86.8. And the values match.